podcast number 75. We have a great show today. We're going to cover some more updates on some incredible drones. Also, some really cool things for marketing uh, from the from your .com, .org, .world, TLDs. And then we're going to also cover CVS going to a Netflix-like look. Uh, digital properties, like I've always told you, very important. Frank gives us a great twin today. And, of course, Dick covers some great entrepreneurial lessons, uh, particularly on networking. And then finally, we start a whole new section called the three wise white men. They were good enough for Jesus, got to be good enough for you. So let's get on with the show. Hi, my name is Peter Russo for 101 Small Business Mastermind, and I have with us our standard cadre of uh, three old wise, white wise men here. Um, say good morning, Dick. Good morning, Dick. And say good morning, Frank. Good morning, Dick. Well, there you go. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a more updates. Uh, you probably didn't think I could actually find uh, more drone stuff, but here we go. And it's amazing what I did find. And here you should see my my media player. And I need to get see. Let me see. I need to get this to the top. Uh, let's see, move to the top. Here we go. Okay, ready? Watch this. Your passions, your hobbies, your experiences define who you are. And you shouldn't have to sacrifice fully living ever. Onagafly, the world's first smart nano drone, helps you capture, share, and experience the most meaningful and exciting moments of your life. Toss Onagafly into the air and instantly be ready to film, throw, and fly. It's that easy. Onagafly's auto follow feature locks onto you and follows you around. You're free to live the experience. With P2P live streaming function, share your Onagafly video live to other mobile devices. Live. Onagafly is highly portable and takes off from the hand with no hassle. You can hover your drone at a particular distance or manually control its flight path. Users of all ages and experience levels can navigate Onagafly effortlessly, both indoors and outdoors. Use smile detection to automatically take the images you want when you want and share the moment right away to your favorite social media. Play with Onagafly, just like playing video games with the tilt control mode. It's designed to capture you from the best angle. With a cutting edge obstacle avoidance technology, Onagafly automatically detect anything in its path and seamlessly shift direction cool to escape contact. That's amazing. Its brushless DC electric motor gives a Nagafly the longevity of 5,000 hours at only 140 grams. The specs pack a punch. GPS module enables auto follow technology. Wi-Fi module allows for connection with smart devices. Infrared obstacle avoidance senses 360 degrees. Lastly, 15 megapixels camera captures awesome photos. With a Nagafly, you can share your whole world from the palm of your hand. Isn't that crazy, guys? Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Wow. Uh, what you can do with that. Now, we'll go to the next one, um, and I think that was $250 price tag. Okay. Can you imagine all the movie producers who oh, want no. to film, uh, film certain scenes had to hire helicopters and booms and cranes and everything? Oh, oh yeah. Well, wait till you see now, the next one. $250. Wait till you see this one now. What if there was an aerial camera platform that really could capture your world from any perspective? Something completely different from anything you've seen before. Look at that. Uh, an aerial platform that was portable, unbelievably rugged, 
powerful and simple to use. One that you could take with you anywhere without a lot of hassle. Introducing Sprite, the world's most portable and rugged unmanned aerial vehicle. Whether you're an active outdoor enthusiast or a serious professional who just needs to get the job done, Sprite is as portable, rugged, and hardworking as you are. The motors and electronics are all sealed tightly into the airframe. <coughs> Dust, dirt, and water. Whether that's happening in the backyard or the backcountry, it even floats. But it's also really easy to use. With Sprite's powerful autopilot, you can create three-dimensional GPS flight paths. It can change speed, hold a position, fly circles, a survey pattern, even scan structures or regions of interest, all while keeping the camera pointed right where you want it. Sprite can even follow you to capture that ultimate perspective. Or if you like, you can fly Sprite with an optional remote control transmitter. The automatic, controllerless flight modes let you program Sprite and leave the controllers back at base camp or at home. The airframe is made up of durable connecting sections, making it super easy to change batteries or even payloads on the go without tools. Sprite comes with a GoPro compatible camera module with a two axis stabilized gimbal so you can take crystal clear video and still images in full high definition. You can easily swap out any compatible GoPro, including your Hero 4 Black, so you can capture amazing 4K video. Other modules are in development, and because Sprite is modular, you'll be able to easily add new cameras, sensors, network communications hardware, and other accessories as they become available. You've spent more than two years perfecting Sprite, and now is your chance to get yours. Pre-order today and secure your spot in the delivery queue. Please visit our website for more information and details about Sprite and about us and to pre-order. Before you know it, you'll be joining thousands of other people around the world who found out what such a portable, rugged, powerful, and simple to use area vehicle can do. I think the day of the drone is here, huh? Wow. Well, <clears throat> well, let me just read the, the USA Today headline and uh, paper, Drones Eclipse Pilot, Piloted Planes. And they, 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 the FAA count may be uh, undercounted. There are more than 325,000 people registered for drones as of Friday. That surpasses the 320,000 pilot aircraft registrations with it you now so there are more drones in the air than planes that's that's crazy but you know yeah. i think too the the whole concept of uh the drones and what it can do for your business is wild you know? it, it really is it, it you know from from golf course builders or, or uh, developers mapping out property and all it's just amazing what they'll be able to do and on the other end you know used improperly by the government and all you know, your, your privacy that was, what little you had left is gone if they want to follow you, you know, you have, you know you're done. <laughs> so, That's absolutely true. Yeah. The, that little micro uh, uh, drone, I mean, I can see the computer repair store lighting one of those things off, watching the techs come out to their car and drive off to the, to a, you know, to a home repair, you know? And then stages, so when they're they're driving in, and you, you stitch all that together into a very compelling video. Yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's what I find amazing, and maybe it's not as quickly as I thought. Is how fast it's got it's evolved from you know uh, it's a drone if you put it in your backyard to where it is now. I mean, it's just the technology advances and the, the control them with your hand and the movements and stuff. It's just amazing. It's yeah. amazing what's going to happen. Yeah. Now, I, I assume the GPS feature is tied to a smartphone. Um, it can be. Otherwise, well, you can just program it from the controller to fly, uh, you know. That, it, no, I'm sorry. That, uh, yeah, you answered the question that I asked. I asked the question. In terms of following you, it, 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 it follows the, the cell phone signal. I, I don't know how that one yes, works. Yes, right? I mean, yeah, what I'm, I'm, sure it has to do something. You know, there has to be some some technology on board you so it knows it's communicating you know so isn't this fascinating it is yeah 
it, 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 it really is. It's mind boggling. And, you know, you think about now a startup business with these drones, right? There's lots of applications that we've seen from underwater drones to uh, every other one. And I, I thought, you know, the reason why this has become a, almost uh, an interesting thing is um, we have uh, seen drones you sit in as a human, <laughs> you know? Every sort of drone, from inside drones to outside drones, the ones that follow you, like Lily, and 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 from a startup standpoint, it's going to be like the GOP. How many candidates did we have at one time? Sixteen, right? They're watering down now, you know, because yeah, and and that's the same thing that's going to happen, and they'll start sharing their technologies and getting together, you know, uh, to make even a, a far better product. Yeah, and. Um, well, the paper, the paper drones, the, the paper airplanes with little propellers on them with the controls, you know, capability. Wild thinking, in my opinion. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, next thing I want to share, let me cue that up. Now we're going to get on with more mundane stuff for business, more, more business-like stuff here. I want to share my screen, and I want to be over here now. Um, pretty crazy stuff, guys, okay? Um, I was doing some research yesterday, and I'm going to move this to the bottom now. Um, I was doing some research yesterday on uh, top-level domains, uh, TLDs, okay? Top-level domains are like .com, .org, .net. Those are called top-level domains. We always think it's the name first and then the .com. Uh, it's not that way. So they're coming up with all these new ones now. Here's .academy, .agency, .bargains, .biz, .bike, .blue, .ok. Builders, cab, camp, center, careers, uh, CEO, clothing, okay? And there's 27 pages of these that are coming available. And what I wanted to show, here's one that's dot .coffee. So I have a coffee client, Sips, Sips.coffee. How easy is that to remember? Here's computer, indio.computer would be a killer uh, URL for the computer repair store because it's a matched URL. If, if in Google, remember, Google's looking for, here we go, get out your cyanide ca capsule, Frank. But, you know, uh, matched URLs are, uh, if somebody types in computer repair in Indio, it looks for URLs that have computer repair in Indio, dot .com, dot .org, dot .whatever in it, right? Well, we can't get computer repair Indio. Somebody else had that. But Indio, dot .computer, we could get. It would trump, no, no pun intended there, Donald, it would trump every other, every other, be on the top of every search engine. So as you go down through this, this is a marketing ploy that, that is almost um, unparalleled in its wildness. They even had, um, it's not listed here, but they have a dot engineer. So uh, here's a, and an even, even, here's GoDaddy offering them now, okay? Here's dot site dot tech dot space dot news dot club dot rock dot company dot life dot website. You know, they don't have as many. Uh, but here's photography. Think of Adrian uh, Massey, right? He's got a photography business, right? Adrian Massey or Adrian uh, dot photography. How easy would that be to remember? Pretty cool, huh? What do you think of that? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I guess. Everything had to be a dot com. If you went a dot com, they said, oh, people won't remember it. Uh, the vehicle we're using right now to transmit and transfer uh, for our, our US, our, right? It's a dot US. Five right. years ago, they said, oh, that'll never work. Now people always put a dot com in. They, you know, well, they, you know, the, the, the rule of thumb is, in fact, correct. They will not remember dot com, dot org, dot, dot, dot net. What, which of the three is it? But if you say sips dot coffee, there you go. Bingo. They're never going to forget that. That's right. You know, here's Ninja. I've got one, Peter Brusso Ninja. You know, uh, but it's just absolutely wild. Properties. Um, they had one. Uh, here's recipes. If you were a recipe person, I mean, just think of the marketing ploy this this makes. Not only for your your clients to remember stuff, but also they know how to spell this stuff. Right? There's a dot support. Um, just absolutely uh, a mind blower. I think that people don't know the revolution that's going to be taking place here. 
As as we have as we are noticing in the this presidential election that we have here, mm -hmm. I keep on saying this country because of who I talked to on off off the camera here. Um, all the rules have been all the old rules that could never be violated have been thrown out the window. Yeah, well, here's a dot bar. Look at that. There you go. There you go. Uh, dot capital. Dot services. Dot engineering. There's the engineering one, right? Yeah. But dot bar. Dot pub. I meant dot bar. Wow. I mean, how can you not forget that, you know? And I, I don't know that people know what, uh, what revolution is around the, the corner here with these new um, <laughs> WTF. Very cool. You know what that stands for, right? Yeah, why the face? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but uh, and here, look at the dental, clinic, care. I mean, actor? Wow. Just a phenomenal way to break these URLs into the business um, uh, segment. Here's a fitness furniture. Can you imagine what you could do with this, Dick? Are you Dick there? No. Oh, can't hear you, Dick. He's, he's on mute. I uh, mute like I always do this. I'm coughing. And, uh, right. No, we appreciate you know, that. Or, but, uh, yeah, it. it, it like that sip uh, coffee is just, just a natural home run. I mean, it, it truly is, you know, and it's like um, I even sent this over to the computer repair store about the dot computer. Yeah. I mean, you might not be able to remember what their name is, but if it was uh, Indio dot computer, <laughs> how could you forget that? So if, if you, you buy that name, Indio.computer. That that's it. No one else can be Indio.computer, right? They Correct. can be the Kinta dot computer, but you know, yeah, yeah. Okay. And if anybody and the and the reason why that's important is if anybody types in uh La Quinta computer repair, who's gonna be on top of that list? Yeah. Right. Laquinta dot computer. Right. Absolutely. Uh wow. what a yeah. what a windfall for somebody yeah. who realizes it. Yeah, no, it is a very good one, that's for sure. Kidding. Um Probably too bad they don't have a dot home based business. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> dot MLM, Frank. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. So that's one thing. Let me go to the last one, and um, I'm going to go back over here. And I keep saying, and I have a new tool. Check out this. I can highlight uh, things on the web. How cool is that, Frank? Yeah. Um, oh, that's really good. Yes, uh, CBS is is uh, is unplugging itself and moving to digital. You don't think your digital properties are important now? And he says, in this bold but not sudden move, in the traditional television executive running a network. Uh, by the way, is an old white guy, 66 years old, uh, and I'll get to that in a minute, um, known for its older viewers, which approached the digital TV revolution gingerly, but now pushing his company to its forefront. He's not only going to, he, he says, but, but it's not nearly as important as some of the new ways of getting revenue, such as interactive digital properties. CBS uh, said this last year, its new Star Trek series scheduled for 2017 would premiere on its network and then switch exclusively to what they call all access. All access is the same thing as Netflix, okay, or Hulu. So they're going to start their own digital channel called all access which of course would have to pre be a premium channel like Hulu is and, and like uh, a Netflix are. So the now brick and mortar CBS has woke up to realize uh, what the digital world would mean for them and an exclusive channel. It says Star Trek is for all access what House of Cards was to Netflix, which we all know House of Cards is a phenomenal show and has had some phenomenal results. And this 66-year-old uh, uh, Moonvis, Moonvis is a vest, I guess is his last name, is not a millennial, uh, but for uh, but familiar than most of his generation to the latest technology. And that I think that's important for us to all realize. You know, we'd gotten criticized because we were throw, three old white guys. Um, we're all three old white guys that, that know technology. Uh, I'd like to see him call Leo Laporte, Leo Laporte uh, ir irrelevant uh, by his age. Um, delivery service uh, uh, Postmates, the, the root finder vase. There are two of his favorite apps. 
So he's, he's even embracing apps now, of course. Every few months, he visits Silicon Valley to see what's new and said he would be open to a seat on the board of a media technology company one day. Now, three old white guys, right? Here this guy is. It's not about age, so we ought to stop, we ought to stop people dead in their tracks. It's not about age. It's about who you are technology-wise. What do you have to say about that? Well, Les, Les is, has been afraid. They, they just replaced the chairman of CBS. Yeah. Was a guy named, well, um, so uh, Redstone. Redstone, Redstone was in his 90s. Yeah. Yeah, in his yeah. 90s. And then Les just, uh, well, they didn't replace him. I mean, it was 90s, you know, summer, go home. Yeah. Uh, uh, but interesting, because Les's wife, um, what used to be a CBS, I don't know what CBS. Maybe. Yeah, she's, 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 yeah, she's, she's, yeah, yeah, she's got a show, she's got a show every summer. Uh, well, actually, she's got a show on every day. Oh, really? Oh, she's still on TV? Yeah, a bunch of women talking, like The View, you know. And, oh, okay. All right, yeah, and yeah. Then, then she does a reality show in the summer called uh, Big Brother. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah. So, Les is, is yeah, and they've done a great job with uh, CBS with their uh, sitcoms, and also with the NFL package that they, they keep on renegotiating. So, so, so Les is sharp. He is extremely, extremely sharp. And I think they streamed the uh, the whole show, the the, um, the Super Bowl. Yeah, they did on the web. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because yeah. You, they see the trend of everybody unplugging. Yeah. Well, yeah, the millenniums that just don't watch TV, <laughs> you know, it's amazing. Well, uh, as we were talking somewhere along this week, you know, if I want if I want to watch Fox News on the web, mm -hmm. I have to have one of the services, mm -hmm. and I have I have Direct TV. Yeah. So they force me to sign in through my Direct TV sign in name before they'll, they'll stream it to me. So that's yeah. one way of some of the big boys stopping you from unplugging. If you know by making the, the, the allegiances with these uh, news services and whatever. Yeah. Well, a couple other things in that vein. Uh, uh, the NFL last year again this year they have they think they have two games in uh, England. One of them is only going to be shown streaming. It's not going to be shown on live TV, and they did that last year, hmm. which, which is you know if, for the networks is you know you you, you can see why. You know, uh, movies is, is saying I got to get into digital because the next contract he, he may have to do his football games on streaming network because that's where the money's going to be. And I think it was you last week or a couple weeks ago, Peter said that Netflix is losing a lot of their movies. Or maybe I read it, read it in the paper. No, I, I said that, yes. Okay. And I think, you know, Netflix has got to, is going to have to come up with a lot more original programming to stay. In business, you know, because the you know, well, network and, is, why should we give them all this revenue when we can get it ourselves? Sure, sure. The and I think that that's a a good reason to point out innovation. You know, by 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 using and what have we always said? Don't build your website or your digital property on top of somebody else's property. Right. Right. Well, Netflix built their whole digital property off of already made TV shows yeah. that it, your CBS or somebody else owned. Yeah, and, and now they want it back to put it in their own right. all access, right? Right, right. And you know, it, it, from a business model point of view, starting up something like that—that that was a very brilliant thing to do. They, they got content immediately, probably at a fairly low sure. price, and then they developed House of Cards. They got another one that uh, two or three other ones are doing the, the original. What I see now, they're doing a lot of uh, remakes of old sitcoms that were popular. In the 70s, they just started to do that also. But what it says to the business owner, no, how big or small, I mean, these are huge businesses, but is you, you, you can't stay status quo. You, you can never stay where you are yet. You can either go forward or you're going to go back. And if you're not looking at it, more than likely you're going to go back. And I, well, I think that's. If, if you look at the waves on the, uh, on the beach, you know, in the ocean, they're in and out. Yeah, in and out. Yeah. And yeah. In and out. Right. Same thing with business. I mean, you just have to stay on top of that. And I think the other thing that's going to revolutionize is the acting industry. You will have more access now for young actors to get involved with all of these various pay per channels, right? Yeah. In yeah. original content. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I only have one friend in Hollywood. I should probably pulse him and see what his, his point of view is. But I think this is a very interesting uh, evolution 
of the digital age film acting entertainment world. Right, and, and the other the other area that is that I've read a lot about this is uh, uh, is your uh, cable providers are in, they're going to be in big trouble in another few years because you're not going to you know if I could get if I could get with a few subscriptions. Uh, well, I want, and I have to deal with uh, Time Warner. I have to buy their bundles of, sh of shows that I don't want to watch. I have to pay for it to get the one I do, where I, I could go and say, I want this, this, and this, and I'm going to do that. And I think the cable companies have got to change their ways. They're going to be, they're going to be history. Well, they, they, they better become their own channel. Right. Now, did, did you, do you guys know why PBS is, uh, is supported by government grants? Uh, because we're stupid. Well, well, that, well I, I think the original intent was the original intent was to get the news out in an unfiltered manner. Boy, that's the, yeah, right. That's <laughs> the original intent. No, no, I mean, again, the reason I heard was that because nobody would pay for it. Uh, that's true. Yeah, and so the government has to subsidize it and and uh, and support it. No, uh, no, so, no, so, no, so when 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 you go to one bundling, a lot of these smaller niche channels uh, are say, "Well, I don't want to." pay for that yeah, you know? yeah. and uh so i, yeah, I love well, it just as an example of, of the cable bundling is uh you know i have time warner at least for another year i guess we're switching over to verizon but uh two years ago they came, they picked up the nfl red zone which is when, when it's back east of my favorite channel it's you, you can watch every game they show every score and play of every game on a sunday and you can watch it so I went to get it here, and I, they, I was told I had to pay for it. So I call them, and uh, it's like I don't know, ten or twelve bucks a month. And I said, well, "Why is it so expensive?" He said, "Well, you got you got to buy all these other channels." I said, "I don't want." Them. And he said, "You know, well, that's how that's how it is. That's going to cost you." And I said, "All right, well, I'll take it and cancel the football season." He said, "No, you have to sign on for a year." <laughs> <laughs> so I said, "The hell with that. I won't, I won't get it." But that's that's what that's what this streaming world is going to eliminate and that's where cable companies make their money because they all these other channels as you know have to pay them something every month so you know, you i know, think the cable world's in, in, in big as we know it is going to change dramatically when i was in outdoor signage at, at bus shelters you know and i learned what they did um you know i just want to buy a, an ad you know or place an ad on the five most uh, busy corners yeah. you can't do that uh, one of those corners has all these other shelters that you have to buy along with it. It's a bundle. You can't get one of. And so what I tried to tell them was get them to realize that, hey, um, you know, we can move premium ads at the right time across the whole city. You don't have to worry about this bundling anymore. Yeah. They couldn't get it in their head right. No. But that's exactly what's happening now or going to happen. Sure. You know, bundling uh, is going to be I, out I, with Excuse me. I, I used to buy. I used to be an NFL fan until I realized I'm a Patriots fan. Really, if when yeah. I want to see the Patriots games, yeah. may 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 not. So I I I because when I've been out here enough for twenty some years, I wanted to watch the Patriots play. I had to buy Sunday ticket on uh, on Directv, which is like three hundred fifty dollars. And then I now get all the Patriots games for a one time fee of twenty five dollars. And it's because I, I bought Slingbox, and I, I tie it into my daughter's TV in Massachusetts, which obviously all the Patriots games are home away, is showing on, on home TV for free. And uh, and I was able to drop Sunday ticket for one time fee of $25, and I watch it on my So, you know, it's just, what I'm saying, the cable companies, the satellite companies, either change or get out of the way because, because we're coming through. Uh, is Slingbox still available? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have, I have. I'm pointing. I have it on my on my desktop right now. Yeah. 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 And, and explain what it does. Slingbox. It it allows you to take. Well, it was designed so you could watch your home TV channels no matter where you traveled. It, it works on your your any any on your iPhone, your, your yeah. smartphone, iPad, or or any computer. And it you use the internet and uh, and it, it it keys into a smart TV somewhere with, with, where you want to watch TV. In those cases, my daughter's house in Massachusetts, and I'm able to watch. In fact, I'm able to watch all the channels on in Boston TV for free. 
Hmm, for the one time charge of twenty five dollars. Yeah, I think I remember hearing about Slingbox about five or six years ago, but yeah. didn't do much investigation with it. it. It saved me a bundle. Yeah, I I, I used to have it out, uh, in Connecticut uh, when I had a residence back there. Uh, I you know you hook it up you know you hook it up to your cable box and you can get your local cable uh, things wherever you are. And when I was out here, I would not be able to watch some of the. New York sports that I liked out here, so I had the sling box, and I would do that. Same thing. Yeah. But now the sling box has to be back in Boston, right? Yeah, it has to be. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah. wherever local. Right, right. It, yeah, it's connected to the TV in the local market, yeah. but I have an internet. I have an app, and that there's an app for that. Yeah. I have an app on my desktop which logs into my daughter's TV and says, "Okay, I know who you are, and here's." And and now that I have remote control. I, I'm on my sling box, I can change the channels. I mean, it's just not, it's like I'm sitting in your living room. Sounds like an Airbnb sling box uh, <laughs> possibility here. <laughs> you know, yeah. hey, anybody wants to watch the local uh, uh, Palm Springs stuff, I'll put the sling box in my house for five bucks a month. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I was going to do an Airbnb thing. Um, uh, on a real twist, I'll do it offline, but unbelievable things that Airbnb has started. Um, crazy things, okay? Crazy stuff. All right. They, they, I, uh, Airbnb has replaced the cheap motels for, for hourly activity. <laughs> they have. That was where I was not going to go. Uh, okay, okay, good. <laughs> okay. All right, let me see. Uh, uh, well, I guess I can, I can say that if, if you are into the shades of gray stuff, there are places you can go now and rent rooms that are in the shades of gray. And, and, and there are 50 of them. <laughs> More than 50, actually. And there's a whole website for it, but there you go. So. Hey, You're on. music. The You're my on. ears. All right, twin, this week's twin, this week in the news. What can we learn from people who are newsmakers? This week's twin is, hey, Francis Crick. Thank Crick. you for the sm Crick. Thank you for the small business lesson. And the question is? Who is Francis Crick? I'm glad. Francis Crick was born in 1916 in the London area of, of England. Um, his family, his father and uncle, Randy family's boot and shoe factory. So they were, they were tradesmen, business owners, but tradesmen. As a child, uh, Francis was, was very, very inquisitive. I call it nosy. And his parents bought him the children's encyclopedia and he read every book of it, devoured it. But what he recognized was that the sections he found the most interesting dealt with science. He said, okay, this is a kid. So Francis would go to, he, he did what he called kitchen experiments, trying different stuff. He's a scientist kind of kid. And he eventually went to study physics at the University of College of London. But there was a problem because the physics they were teaching him at, at the University of London, University of College of London, they were already out of date. And that bothered him. That bothered the kid. So he taught himself basic quantum math mechanics while doing research on a study of viscosity of water. Boring, boring stuff. Love it. I love it. <laughs> really? You, you, you can relate to that? Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, right. Okay. But then something happened. World War II came in. And Trump did studies. And so he went to work for the, I guess what they called the Admiralty, whatever that was. Right. And he worked on magnetic and acoustic mines for, for, for the war. When the war ended, war ended, Francis continued to work there. But he said, man, I don't want to spend the rest of my life um, designing weapons. So he said, I, you get out there. So he went something called life sciences. Why? Because he liked reading. He liked thinking and talking about new discoveries being made in life sciences. And then he made a statement, which I, which I thought about when I was doing my research. And I said, man, this is really true. Here, here's Francis' statement. He says, what you are really interested in is what you talk about and what you gossip about. And when I think about that, I love talking about marketing and branding and that kind of stuff. And I said, yeah, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. But there was not always a good side to Francis. As a child, Francis was taken to church by his parents because that's what you did every Sunday. By the age of 12, remember he's only 12 years old, he went to his parents and says, hey, I'm, I'm not going to go to church anymore. It's a waste of time. 
He said, I prefer a scientific search for answers over religious belief. Oh, okay. Francis, he referred to himself as a humanist, which he defined as the belief that the human problems can, can and must be faced in terms of human and moral resources without invoking some supernatural authority. And Francis was especially critical of Christianity. He said, I do not respect Christian beliefs. I think they are ridiculous. He said, if we could get rid of them, Christian beliefs, we could more easily get down to the serious problem of trying to find out what the world is all about. Wow. Pretty strong statements. Yep. So, so far, all we know is that Francis liked sciences and did not believe in God. So what? And here is a so what why I talked about Francis Crick today. Late in 1951, he was 35 years old, Francis started working with a gentleman named James Watson. And together, Crick and Watson discovered what is widely considered today as the most important scientific discovery of the 20th century. That had to be pretty damn big to be called the most important discovery of the scientific discovery of the 20th century. Francis Crick and James Watson introduced the world to the double helix DNA structure, so-called the secret of life. Wow. Which all of our genetics and everything else comes from that. So Francis Crick and James Watson made the presentation of their discovery to the Nobel Prize Committee, and they were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. Again, so what? And here is the small business lesson that I'm going to be working on in my next lesson with my Canadian and my Australian clients. This is the so what. Listen to this. Crick and Watson's full presentation, which introduced the secret of life, explaining it in detail and showing it how it works at a Nobel Committee, was done in five minutes total. Now, you heard me right. Mm. Five minutes total. They introduced the secret of life, explained it in detail, and showed how it works. There's one heck of a small business lesson. Extremely important. How long does it take you to describe in detail what you offer to your prospects? If it takes you longer than five minutes, you're taking way, way too much time. If the most important discovery in the 20th century can be presented in detail in five minutes, so can your offering be presented in detail in five minutes or less. Your goal in when, when presenting what you offer to clients is to inform, intrigue, and excite your prospects of what you offer, not to bore them to death. Why does this came up? come up? Because the, the next lesson I'm going to be giving to my network marketing clients um, they have a presentation which was obviously approved by corporate and so forth, um, <clears throat> comprised of PowerPoint slides with pretty pictures and lots of words and all sorts of things. Um, and it takes them 34 minutes to do it. 34 minutes. I'm, pres I'm, I'm presenting a week from Friday on my, on my lesson four, I think it's lesson four I'm giving, how to do that same presentation in five minutes. But wait, there's more. No PowerPoint. How to do it on the back of a napkin. And that's my small business lesson for this week. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. He also he also worked in San Diego at the Salk Institute. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I, I, I figured you'd look him up. Yeah, he worked on here in La Jolla, yeah. Yeah, and yep. I've got a good friend that works at the Salk Institute. So, so yeah, he died in like eight, ten years ago, maybe twelve years ago. Two thousand and four. Oh, yeah, twelve years ago. Yeah. So, if your friend was there, he probably had the opportunity to meet with one of the most important scientific discovery people in the twentieth century. That that is. Died, cool. And he died of colon cancer at the twenty eighth of July two thousand and four. Okay. Yeah, pretty crazy. And his ashes were spread in the ocean, uh, Pacific Ocean. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so, uh, and a preventable disease these days, mostly, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. Dick, any questions on that? No. <clears throat> that darn cough. <laughs> 
I thought, by the way, Frank, you would pitch the 7, 17, uh, or 27. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's to get him intrigued. And, and when, when they do that, then you bring him into a presentation, which is a one-on-one. And, uh, and like I say, my napkin thing, um, and, and, that, but, and I, just, I just did it. Um, I just designed just, just for, just no, I, I, I was going to say uh, kind of what you just said. I, I, uh, I, I think it's a, it's a process to get a prospect through the you know, signing up period or whatever it is. It, it starts out with the, your, your, your 27 seconds or how many seconds you want it to be to grab their interest. And then I think the next step is that five minute, hey, here's what's in it for you. And then they, then get them to maybe maybe then they need to see the longer one. But at that point, they're doing it because they want to in their interest and they want more information. I think there's a process along the way that you take these people along. I've been going through it with with a couple of people this last couple of weeks, and uh, uh, and I know on my surfboard I have that CD, and and it's exactly what you were just saying, Frank. It's probably it's about 26 minutes long, and you know, and I told you about the suggestion I had from one of the people that looked at it. And, uh, and I, I'm, uh, I was thinking along the lines that Peter and I were talking about it last night is, is, is to do away with that totally and just have myself and uh, maybe Peter interviewing Peter as associate or whatever for three or four minutes. And then if someone's really interested, I'll say, okay, let's watch this thing together or something like that. So but I, think it's, I think I'm learning it's, it's a process. You gotta grab them in 27 seconds or whatever it is. Then you have, in five minutes, you gotta be able to tell them why it's a good opportunity for them. And then, then you take them the next step along the way. As a matter of fact, uh, I am ch- again um, because we, we it's it's confidential with the company I'm working with. Yeah. Um, they call their presentation the business opportunity. Yeah. And I've changed the title of it. Mm. I changed it to it's a lifestyle opportunity. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's good, Frank. You determine what lifestyle you want for your family right. and your loved ones. And I and I and, I, and a napkin. I do four levels. And you can go as many levels as you want or whatever you want to do and bing, bing, bing. And, it, and it's all about lifestyle as opposed to – anyway, so that, that's where I'm going with that. Frank, do you know how many, how many uh, inventions I have on the back of, an embol- or back of a napkin? Really? <laughs> Anthony and I used to go have a hot dog at, uh, at Costco and grab a napkin and talk. And we invented more stuff on the back of a napkin than you can possibly Isn't imagine. Isn't that amazing? It is. I mean, and it works, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, you've proven it. Oh, absolutely. Matter of fact, one of our, our major inventions we invented with a stick and some post-it notes on a two-and-a-half-hour drive from Ontario back to Escondido, or Poway. I just, I just, I just completed a series of uh, uh, lessons that I'm self personal development my end um, on called visual thinking, mm-hmm. in which we use stick figures and pictures to get your point across. Yeah. Very few yeah. words. Yes. Yeah. Figures and pictures. Be, be, oh, and and, and okay, here we go. One more point. Um, the reason why I'm 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 against the PowerPoint with all the pretty words and colors and that type of thing. People cannot read and listen at the same time because their brain don't can do one or the other. But they can see and listen at the same time because we do it. We're doing it right now. Mm-hmm. We're doing it when we watch TV and when we go to a movies. And so by using pictures, they can see the pictures and they can hear you talking. They're associating your words with the pictures and it's it more indelible in their brain. And, and, and they capture it more, more, more easily. And they, they remember it longer. If you think about us as a predator, those are the first two things we learn to survive with, our eyes and our ears. Later, as, as, as higher thinkers, we drew stick figures on the side of a cave. So... Evolutionary wise, probably. And, and, and yeah, when, people, when people say they can't draw, and I says, "Can you draw a sick figure?" Oh yeah, I've been doing that since I was a kid. Okay, that that that, that is a that excuse. You can well, draw. Well, I'll be the first one to. I cannot draw. You can know. you draw a stick figure? I can draw stick figures, but that's not what I consider drawing. Can, can, no. can you can you draw a smiley face? Sometimes. Okay. What, what, there, there are there issues. Okay. okay. I admire people who can look at a thing and then and then draw it. I admire that. Uh, it's just not in my makeup. Yeah. You know. Okay. And that's just not in my makeup. So, but anyway. All right. So. Uh- uh, Dick, you've got some entrepreneurial lessons on our C block. 
Well, uh, yeah, I've kicked around a couple of things, but I think I'm going to go with uh, a little bit about network marketing because, you know, Frank has talked a lot about it with his uh, business, and uh, I'm, I'm a, you know, going into my third year as a network marketer, and I, and I, I go back to what my uh, opinion of network marketing uh, was uh, with companies like Amway, you know, there's no pyramid scheme and all these other things, and uh uh, I had to overcome that just on my own level of uh, of you know, starting my own business, and so I, just a few quick things that with, with what the advantages of network marketing would bring an individual, but uh, also maybe you know pitfalls also. So you know, it, one thing network marketing is not it's not a get rich quick thing. It's a legitimate business model that can have huge payoffs if you're willing to put in the work, but. You know, if you're if you're talking to someone, they they're trying to get you to become an associate with their company. They and they say, hey, you're gonna you know you're gonna make you know millions of dollars, fifty thousand dollars a year, first year, and on up and all. Don't buy it. You know, it takes time to build your business and your organization. It takes time and hard work to get yourself going on it, and then you know, that then get new associates going and producing for it. For themselves and in turn for helping you so so don't look at network marketing as well i'm going to get in it and i'm going to get rich quick and make a lot of money because you know those those people like in my company and all the other companies that are at the top of their thing that are making forty fifty thousand dollars a month have been doing it for 20 years and have cracked the code been there you know it's like trying to be, you know, become a professional athlete less than one percent of anyone playing football will ever make it to the nfl it's the same thing here so enter with your eyes wide open and set your, I think, Frank, you addressed it in your, uh, uh, what you're talking about as far as, you know, setting what, what level of lifestyle do you want to have? Here's what, you know, and set those goals and, and, and when you reach them, go up a little bit more, but uh, don't expect to get there overnight. It's not going to happen. Now, another, another thing you hear about all the time is, you know, you can be your own boss. So you can set your own schedule. You can, you know, you can, you know, just do what you want and all, and, and that's a good thing. It's a bad thing, you know. If you're a good boss, then it's a good thing. If you're a bad boss, it's a bad thing. What I mean by a bad boss, if you can't get your butt out of bed and get to work and you know, you know do the things necessary to be successful, well, you're a bad boss, so you won't be successful. So look at yourself and say, what kind of a boss am I going to be? Am I going to be a good one? I'm going to work and do this, that. Then it's a great thing. But if you if you think you know, just because you're your own boss, you're going to make a lot of money. Well, it's not going to work that way. A real good part of network marketing is is you can start it part time while you while you're uh, <clears throat> working your full time job because now we're you know it doesn't take you can do a couple hours a day you know weekends whatever, and you can be very successful at it. And I often thought back and wish I had started in network marketing field 20 years ago because I would have built up a beautiful beautiful retirement program. And uh, and I still would have been making money and paying my bills. And Jim, uh, Jim Rome, who is an entrepreneur, personal development guru in network marketing, says work full time on your job and part time on your fortune. Again, you know, when, you, when you're talking to people that are in their 30s, 20s, 40s, even 50s, uh, you know, you, I, it, the best counsel in the world is to tell them to get into one of these home based network marketing things. That is your retirement program. That's your, you know, that's where you're going to, you know, eventually be able to retire on. And if, if for any reason, you know, you lose uh, your present job, at least you have some income coming in under the thing. A lot of people refer to it as Plan B. This should be your Plan B. So you know, it's, uh, it's uh, again, it's, it's. I think is it probably the best reason to get into network marketing is that point right there. You know, it's, I think that's the best reason. You know, personal development, you know, I think uh, from my experience, I've had a, a, a tremendous amount of personal growth getting into my home-based business and working as a network marketer. From where I started to where I am now, you know, I've, I've, I've learned so much more about how you should do your network marketing business. I've learned a lot of that. Obviously, with, with, uh, with Peter's technology help, I've, I've come a long way from that area. So, so you know, I started at age 73 or 4, whatever it was, and, and you know, here I am three years later. I know I, I've enriched my knowledge base, and, and I think that's great for so many levels, from a business level and a personal level. 
you know, the brain is a muscle that needs to be used, and I'm using it, and that, I think, keeps me young. So I think there's a great deal of uh, thing, a benefit there. And then, you know, more and more Americans are, are, are trying to take control of their personal finances because, you know, we talked about it last week, all the layoffs that are going to be coming on and on. And, you know, it looks like, you know, the market was at least at 930 is down 350 points, Jeez. you know. Yep. Today, it, it's it, it's dropped almost 1,000 points in, you know, a couple of weeks. And, you know, people are laying off, they're restructuring, they're doing all these things. And more and more people are going into the contract at a freelance world. I just got this, these stats here. And right now, 30%, 34% of the workforce is made up of independent contractors. And by, uh, by the year 2020, half of the workforce are going to be people who are independent contractors. I think that's forced because of, of you know, things like Obamacare that people are trying to, you know, get below and not have to pay for the insurance yep. and things like that. And there's yep. a lot of reasons why that's happening. And these people are great, but but I was an independent contractor. They called me a consultant after my company was sold. I was an independent contractor to uh, the company that bought us for five years. And then they decided the market was, you know, really took it down. They had to cut expenses and they didn't need my independent contracting anymore. So boom, you know, there was my income gone. So I think, especially if you're an independent contractor, the natural evolution is becoming a, a network marketer and I'm a, a multi-level marketer. It, so I think if you're out there and you're in that world, just take a second and, and I'm, you know, I'm legal shield, but I'm not, I'm not promoting legal, I'm, I'm promoting the network marketing industry. It is a true business industry. You could see people like Robert Kiyosaki, uh, Mark Cuban, Jim Rome, all these people that are well-respected uh, 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 businessmen are all touting network marketing. So I think it's a, it's a good opportunity for you to time to look into what suits your, your style best. Yeah, is network marketing forever? No, it's not. You know, it, you, like I say, you could be a good boss or a bad boss. And if you're a bad boss, network marketing isn't for you because if you can't manage yourself, you're in trouble. It's a simple bottom line. That's what it is. So, but it's a great way to get started. And, and, and unlike traditional corporate systems, which I, in my mind are the pyramid, when I was working, Gordon Marshall made the most money. You know, but he made another guy made next most money. And he went right down the lane that that was a pyramid that the people at the lower uh, levels of service were the, the least amount of money. With network marketing, if you've got the right company, there's some out there you got to uh, do research on, the right company you can make is, you know, I, I signed somebody up uh, just last week who I think is going to be making more money than me in three months. So if you've got the right company, they, you can grow and grow and there's no restriction on it. It's not, there's no such thing as a pyramid. So uh, for those who, who are tuning in and listening to this, Give it a look. You know, no matter if you're working right now or if you're not working, give it a look. It's, I, like I said, I wish I had done it 20, 30 years ago. So that's, uh, that's it for me. Well, Bernie Sanders might fix that income inequality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's for sure. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, good. Frank, you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, you saw about the uh, the pyramid. Uh, I just I just finished a book that they, uh, you may have heard about it because you know I'm doing the research for my project I'm working on. It's called a 45 second presentation. I don't know. I have no. Yeah, it's a it's a short book, maybe 70, 80 pages, I guess it is, on on network marketing. How how to how to give a uh, network marketing describe network marketing 45 seconds or less. Yeah. And uh, and and the guys of network marketer and, and and the book comes with videos. And he, he does a good job. Yeah. Uh, but it is it is it is the future. Yeah. It it is the future. It is the uh, and there's no age barrier. Matter of fact, you talk about the inverse pyramid. I know of at least one person in this company that I'm working with who makes at least one that, that makes more than any executive in home office. Yeah makes more than any executive in the home yep. market. No, that potential's there. And the other thing which I didn't mention, I've done it, it's usually a fairly low cost of entry. You know, you could start at a legal shield for 99 bucks now, you know, so it's, it's, it's a fairly low cost of entry. If you're going to start your own business where you got to go buy bricks and mortars, computers and all that stuff, it's a, or you do a McDonald's franchise, that type of thing. This is, you know, the average person can get in Probably for three or four hundred bucks tops, depending on the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and a pair of nice clothes and and networking, you yeah. know, meetings yeah. and, and chamber of commerces, and yeah. Yeah. and off you go. Yeah, yeah, you can build your own business.
own business. Yep. All right. Uh, our, I want to introduce another new block. We're going to introduce the um, three old white wise men block. And if the three wise men were good enough for Jesus, then we're good enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> and this this new segment came came by because um, of something Frank said uh, last week or the week before. You know, we have an awful lot of knowledge between the three of us. Um, <laughs> Uh, that we unfairly use against millenniums. <laughs> he didn't quite say it that way, uh, no. but I will. Uh, but and in, and so in that vein, I want us to start telling you know pick pick a topic, start telling some stories about our experience in that particular topic. And I want to share the at a conference or a call yesterday from a friend of mine who wanted to had an opportunity to get in front of an angel uh, uh, investor type guy well a guy that in, introduces them to angels or investors he just said investors this guy didn't know enough to know understand an angel round from a b round or a c round or um and so uh i explained to him that in fact uh he wasn't even ready to meet that guy he goes, what do you mean? I said, well, uh, let's just take frogs. You decided you wanted to sell frogs um, to pet stores in the Coachella Valley. Wouldn't it be the first thing you go do to find out how large the frog market currently is? Question mark. Number two, who is selling the frogs? Who's the competition? What frog are they selling? Are you in, you know, how big are their sales and who, who are they? Uh, that would be number two. And number three uh, would be, what are you going to do to capture market share? And he goes, well, I'm not selling frogs. I said, I understand that. But the first three things an, an investor is going to ask is, what is the market size that you're going after? You know, if you're out there trying to sell something that has no market, they're not going to be interested in investing in you. Number two, they're going to ask you, who are your competitors? Well, who are we up against? How strong are they? What are they selling? And number three would be, of course, uh, what are you selling different than them that you could capture the market share? And I said, I wouldn't even talk to this guy until you've got all of that, at least in, in, in your hands. Um, and I said, and in this case, I had done a business plan for them, but not the financials. And I said, one of the most important people that you need to push in front of these people is your CFO. If your CFO isn't going to take the time to do the financials, um, you're sunk. And you better get in there and do the financials with the CFO because if you are the CEO of this effort, then you need to understand those numbers backwards, forwards, and otherwise when you get in front of these angels because they're not just going to give you a bunch of money and, and go off and have your way. And I said, and let's talk evaluation. So if you wanted to have um, – a uh, hundred thousand dollars or let's say let's say for for instance uh, ten thousand dollar a hundred thousand dollars for ten percent uh, of your company then your evaluation is a million and when your sales over the last five years have only been two hundred thousand uh, those numbers don't wash your company is really worth almost nothing and so you want these angels to come in for the small percentages they're going to take seventy percent. And so you really need to understand the uh, the the from which you're, the world from the waters from which you're traveling, and it was very clear to him after I got done, uh, they're not ready. And so I want to open it up, Frank. You and and Dick, I think to some degree, uh, have raised money, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I raised I raised money for my own company in the states, and then I was. Uh, I, I had a, I was given a project to go to, to the Singapore and India to raise money for three American companies. Yeah. And uh, um, can you add anything to what these angels look for? Yeah. What? Well, okay. When when I was when I was doing it for my company here in the states, it was for an electronic medical records company. Mm -hmm. Prior to GE getting into business, I used that because. When they came, they said to do what I was out. Um, but I would go to the doctors themselves. But I did it through intro. I was introduced. I had my my chief medical officer was a doctor on my company, and uh, he had a lot of friends. And it was the African American community. I was, so I would go. I would go visit African American doctors, and um, and he would introduce me. Then I'd go in and and talk. 
Um, and uh, and then I then I was introduced to some VCs and some investment bankers, and then I, I was able to raise enough money to start the company, and then GE just wiped us out. But when I when I went to uh, Singapore and India, working for uh, raising money for three American companies, one was an online university, one was a um, an internet learning company, another one was a I was I was looking to get funding for a movie, uh, to, a movie to be produced. Um, it was a whole different presentation. It was a whole different presentation. What what my presentation was? I used a lot of metaphor, but I was I was the front man because I was a guy. And uh, if they if I got them interested enough, they would request a meeting with the CEO or the founder of the company. So I was gauged on how many people requested a meeting with the CEO to get further information. So uh, what I did differently is I didn't go in with any pitch decks because it was premature. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did it the first time. And it was really what a waste of time, and it was flying in and out of uh, cities in India. Uh, and I would go in with just a portfolio and never open it and say and just talk, and just talk. And and what I was selling them was the vision, as opposed to the details. So I did I didn't need the business plan, because, right? Because they didn't ask for one. And no, the, if I presented a business plan, they would have said. They were going like this. Oh yeah, I'll put it in a, in, a, in a corner with all those 50 other people trying to get money from me. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was selling them a vision and a story. And mm-hmm. then, so that, that was the approach I took. Yeah. Uh, Dick, you want to weigh in? Yeah, well, from my uh, perspective, uh, you know, I was involved in a, you know, a fairly large corporation and, you know, we would be, you know, going to Wall Street to, for investment bankers and acquiring companies or whatever. You know, the, the, just the thing that, that I always found their interest, the, the bottom line of, of all of what Rich is, is how will I get my money back and make money? I mean, that's that's the, the number one thing. So when we went in, we had to be prepared. It's a little different than Frank's. I mean, we had, we had to be prepared with the financials. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what's our, what is our business plan? You know, if, if we acquired this company, what's the plan to merge them together and things of that nature, which we would present? And, and it's, it's details of that area. Uh, and we would be presenting to the, the, the decision makers of, you know, whether they're going to go with us or not. But the, the, other than the fact that they're going to say, okay, I, what, what's, what's the risk factor in this investment? How do I get my money back and make money? The thing that, that, they, that I felt in dealing with these people, which was not hugely extensive, but it was, it was, it was a fair, fairly good degree, is were you prepared? Did you know what you're talking about? Did you do? Did you present yourself properly? Do you have the details covered? You know, to, your, to your, the things that you laid out to the to your your buddy uh, as far as what they're going to be looking for. Those are all things that they're they're looking for. You know, what is your plan? How real is it? What are you going to do with the money? How are you going to do this? How are you going to? So you could you present you present your your facts to them, and then the the key part was the next 45 minutes or so answering the, the how are you going to do it, the hows, mm-hmm. how, what's, why type of thing. You better have those answers thought out and, and present in an intelligent way to them because that, that they get the confidence that you know what you're talking about. Then, you know, you got to plan. You know, anybody, anybody can put together a really great business plan and most anybody can present it. But can they stand up for the, the scrutiny afterwards of guys trying to tear it apart and, and almost like the, the debates you're seeing on TV now with the presidential candidates, you know, like Marco Rubio. I mean, he wasn't ready for Chris Christie. He got destroyed, and it cost him big time. If you're fumbling, you know, you go, I don't know, let me check in one of these meetings. You might just as well fold up your briefcases and go. So, so I, 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 the, the thing is preparation, knowledge, have a good plan. And being able to explain it, you know, uh, intelligently. You, and 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 if you if you're looking for money for a value, you know, for for, the, for someone to buy a percentage of companies, you better have an accurate evaluation. I mean, we all watch Shark Tank. You just, we see what these guys do. To so the guy who comes in and says, uh, you know, what I have two million dollar valuation. What are your sales? Well, we we, we did about twenty thousand last year. You know, forget it. They're going to throw you right out. And if you don't have the answers. You, 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 you look at, you, they all ask the same questions every week. It's, it depends on how the person presenting answers those questions, whether they get a deal or not. So yeah. preparation. The who, what, where, when, when, uh, and yeah. how is yeah, important at that, that last stage. Yeah. And, yeah. and I always, I always say, you know, 
getting a VC to go along with you is like dating a playmate, mm -hmm. playboy playmate. You have one yeah. chance. Right. They're not going to let you call right. back again. No. They're not going to get another email. You have yeah. one chance. Right. You better be completely prepared for that right. and have done your homework. That's what mm -hmm. I think. Right. Yeah. Last thing I want to bring up too, and we'll, we'll speak more about it next week, but I suddenly realized uh, of the business plans that I have been doing, I have not been including a customer service plan. And so Dick and I were discussing that last night about customer service plans and, and uh, Dick, you want to weigh in or Frank, you want to weigh in on how important a customer service plan is? Yeah, go ahead, Dick. Yeah, I, uh, it's the backbone of your company. You know, uh, you, I worked in a, a, a electronics distribution, tremendously competitive business, not great margins. You had to be, you, know, you had to be able to operate on, you know, very low overhead and, and, and charge. But the one thing you couldn't, you could not compromise was your customer service. That's that, the only differentiator between my, myself and the other three top, top competitors, we sub, sold sometimes the, the same product, the same microprocessors, AMD or Intel's, you know, the prices were, you know, we could, you could cut prices a little way. The, diff, the only differentiator that we could come up with was our customer service, that we had to be the best at serving the customers. And next week, if you, if we're going to talk about it, I go into more detail of some of the things yes. that we did. Let's, let's get some stories for that. Frank, you want to yeah. weigh in before we uh, close off? Yeah, yeah. It, um, I think, yeah, we talked about this before, before we open the show. If you want repeat business, customer service is the key. Right. If you want to sell them and leave them, don't care. Yep. You know, so I, I, and not being a little facetious, everybody wants repeat business because that's more profitable. That's so, yeah. All right, guys. Well, anything else? No. I'm All right. Then we will stop recording.